Greetings Earthlings, Edbud here and I'm back. I've got a first in a new series for you today of future running shoe, yay or nay. I'll explain in a moment, it's a bit weird, but I think it could work. If you're a new subscriber, of which there are many, I do thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button down here in the bottom corner and click the bell for notifications below so you're informed of when new videos are launched. I'd also really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up like to help rocket us up the charts. I do thank all the viewers for sending in some really lovely messages recently. I'm glad you're enjoying some of the content and it's helping you to get through these very strange times that we live in right now. So in this new series, I'm gonna be commenting on some future running shoes which are yet to be released or may have just been released and I'm gonna confirm whether I think they're a yay or a nay. Am I gonna test them out and purchase them on release or am I gonna leave them on the virtual shelves? I'd like you, the viewers as well, to comment below and tell me on each of the running shoes whether you think they're a yay or a nay to you. First up, the Brooks Hyperion Elite. Hyperion was one of 12 Titan children in Greek mythology that went on to overthrow their father. Beast, this isn't the right script. What are you doing? You're asleep on the job again. The Hyperion Elite from Brooks is a weird shoe in that it's already been superseded by the Elite 2. I think they only released this one in early March, but already Brooks have come out and said that there's going to be a second version of the shoe, which will release later in the year. This second version of the shoe is going to use the same DNA flash midsole material that's in the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. But obviously it will have the same carbon plate that features in the Elite. That second version of the shoe seems to use the same upper as the first version that's just been released. I think there's an April release date for this, maybe late April, but obviously release dates are kind of a little fluid right now. A number of reviewers have already picked up the Hyperion Elite and it wasn't particularly favorable. They didn't really like the midsole foam. That was a big bugbear in the shoe. They just found it very, very firm, which means for me, the Hyperion Elite from Brooks, first version is certainly a nay. On to Adidas now and their Adi Zero Pro. There seems to be two colorways of this releasing. There's a black colorway and then a blue one with a very strange lemon rubber section on the heel. And the designers just thought, hey, let's throw in a bit of the old lemon there. This shoe was supposedly gonna release in very early April and then it got pushed back to the 14th of April and I waited there on the website at 11 p.m. when it said it was gonna launch and within one second, it just came up that it was sold out. <laughs> I think I smell a rat. I'm pretty sure that was a measure just to satisfy the IFA so the shoe appeared like it had released, but actually we all know it hasn't really. I've yet to see anybody that's picked it up from that drop. I think it was a, uh, yeah. Let's not, let's not go there. That shoe now has appeared again, both colorways, to release on May the 14th. I hear a weird noise over there. I think the pheasant's back on the roof. I had a pheasant up there the other day. Don't know where it came from. Again, both colorways of the Adi Zero Pro have now reappeared on the site for a release of May 14th at 11 p.m. So we'll see if that happens or not. I'm not gonna put an awful lot of faith into that release. I think it could slip again yet. Let's hope this does happen though. Omori-san, the Japanese shoe master, is at the controls for this one, making him out to be some sort of DJ or something. I've read quite a lot about this shoe designer and certainly seems to favor very simple shoes, a very scaled back outlook. I think it's certainly gonna be a light shoe. There's only a small implementation of boost in the heel section. You've got a light stripe midsole and a carbon plate equipped with the Continental rubber. All of that means this is a firm yay for me. I'll certainly be trying to pick this one up. That light stripe material's quite interesting on the Takumi Sen 6. It's a TPU based foam, so a plastic with superb elasticity and real resistance to abrasion. I think it's actually used in a lot of phone cases actually. It's got brilliant impact absorption, so kind of works for phone cases. I'm always very careful with mine, I don't like dropping my phone. It really does send shockwaves through my body when people do that. At a price of £159, it's still up there, certainly in the realm of the Hoka Carbon X, but it's still clear of that very costly New Balance fuel cell TC. That leads us very smoothly into the announcement of the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X SPE. So this is set for a May release. Again, it could change. So it's a Carbon X, but with a new upper. It's gonna have a booty construction, but then a mesh outer section 
to the upper. The upper wasn't really a big problem to me in the Carbon X, the original version. It was more the firm and quite rigid midsole. I just didn't really get on with it that well. It wasn't a hugely inspiring shoe for me, and it's not one I've been sort of looking to grab and utilize again anytime soon. They've even increased the heel counter now. There's a more rigid heel counter around the back of the foot, and then they've added a TPU overlay around the eyelets as well. So all of this is just gonna to add to more weight from what I can see. The midsole, outsole, it's kind of the same thing on this shoe, are the same from the Carbon X. After my recent comparison video between the Fuel Cell TC, the Turbo 2, and the Carbon X, Lots of viewers have contacted me and said they've had similar overtly firm and sort of unresponsive rides and quite a few injuries actually from using the Carbon X. Yes, there are a lot of people that really, really enjoy the shoe, but it does seem that quite a few of you have had major issues with it. You know, these are quite experienced runners as well who've been using the shoe for a considerable time and they just haven't got on with it. So to me, the upper isn't really the thing that you need to change, Hoka. So changing up the upper, adding some weight in there, certainly elements that are gonna increase the weight and sticking with the same midsole outsole combination. For me, this is firmly a nay. It's not really a foam that I've found particularly useful in my running rotation. If you remember back to January in my comparison video between the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X and the Nike Next Percent, it really did pale in comparison to the Next Percent, the Hoka Oni Edition. It really just blew it away. It's not a shoe that gets even close, I think, to the comfort and the energy return that you get from the next percent. The upper's looking a little more substantial, less flexible, and less breathable, actually. And breathability was actually one of the big plus points for me in the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. It was a superbly breathable upper, so certainly a nay this time around, Hoka. June 20th, put it in your diaries. This is apparently when the A6 Meta Racer will release. The Meta Racer's got a rocker style midsole outsole combination. A6, of course, call it the Glide Soul. Whenever I think of Glide Soul, I think of Soul Train, that awesome TV program. I've watched loads of episodes of Soul Train on YouTube. I really love it. It's always some great musical acts on there. So the Meta Racer's got a shorter carbon plate. It just goes from the midfoot to the forefoot, branches off a bit like a Lego character's hand. We've got flight foam again here, the same stuff that's been used in the Evo ride and a midfoot, forefoot rubber section that apparently is gonna be very good in wet weather. So could be a bit of a favorite over here in the UK. Or maybe if you live in Portland, Oregon or somewhere like that. I think I could probably live in Portland, Oregon quite easily. There's loads of music, people run a lot in Portland and they've got more microbreweries per square meter than anywhere else in the world, I think. So what more does a guy want? There's a nine millimeter drop here in the Meta Racer and a lot of the early reviews that have been released have commented that it could be more a half marathon shoe really as a sort of specialist for the half marathon distance that certainly attracted my attention. A lot of the reviewers said that there's just not enough cushion there for a full marathon, it would be perhaps a little bit harsh to use it for that. I think it's always hard to say if a shoe will last the test of time over a huge distance like the marathon or further. It's just put such a strain on the body to undertake that kind of test, really. Unless, of course, you're like Jim Wormsley or someone like that. That man is exceptional. Very low weight on this one and a price tag of around about £180, which is steep for a shoe, it has to be said. I think that I do want to try this one. I've been very impressed with the innovations ASICs have been coming up with. So for the Meta Racer, it's certainly a yay for me. I hope you've enjoyed this first video in this new series. There are just so many innovative and exciting running shoes coming out. It seems like the right time to launch it. Please do remember to subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate it. Hit that button down here and also the bell for notifications so you know when new videos have been launched. Please give the video a thumbs up like, very much appreciate it. Please do comment below with your yay or nay opinions on each of the running shoes that I've covered today. Please share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you 